Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GEM, the ECMWF, the GFS ensembles, the ECMWF ensembles and we'll finish off having a look at the UK Met Office run as well. Now yesterday we're having a look at the, at the jet stream finally breaking through the big block that we have, we have over the moment and it does look like that's going to be happening towards this coming weekend, maybe Sunday, Monday time is when low pressure is going to be returning for many areas starting in the west. We also see something very interesting on this latest GFS where we actually do see an X hurricane spin up into a very deep area of low pressure and heads towards the UK. Now it's in the longer term, but of course very interesting to see that. That is, that is something that is possible over the next few weeks as we've got a lot of tropical systems developing out in the Atlantic. So we do run through the latest GFS. You can see We've got the big block over the UK at the moment. Nothing really is going on. We do have a lot of trapped cloud, though, unfortunately. We've got a bit of an inversion going on where, is, where the surface is actually quite cool, even though the upper air temperatures are relatively warm. And this is a scenario where it just is a bit unfortunate where we do see a lot of glow cloud, a few drizzly showers trapped, and temperatures lower than expected. Now, the worst conditions are probably in the east, um, or they are in the east. Further west, we have seen some cloud breaks and temperatures are rising to a reasonable level, getting up to around 20, 21, 22 degrees. But for many in the east, um, I don't think anyone would really say this is what we typically want to see with a big air of high pressure like this. But if we do continue through the week, there will be some brighter spells. But again, it will be very similar with a lot of trap cloud. So we actually kind of do want the low pressure to sweep through, get rid of this cloudy high. Um, and yes, it will bring some uh, more rain and showers in, but at least we might see some brighter spells as well. You can see towards Friday, you can see the block is starting to break down. But it only is, is really towards sort of Saturday evening to Sunday and Monday before the first low pressure system moves in. Now it's a week low to our south. If we do have a look at the upper air temperatures, you can see it's drawing up to warmer air temporarily. So we may on Sunday see some decent temperatures in the far east. But it will, of course, have showers and the potential, of course, whenever we have warmer air mixing with instability of a few thunderstorms. Beyond that, though, you can see we've got the, uh, the jet stream powering up. We've got a lot of energy out there. Now, one thing we've got to keep an eye on is early next week, we have this hurricane or uh, tropical system. And look at how deep it is. It does look like it will be a hurricane, if not a strong tropical storm. And that's heading northwards through the, throughout the Atlantic. Now, that will be one of the uh, sort of developing systems we're watching at the moment um, in the Atlantic. It hasn't formed yet, um, but it's just a tropical wave. So it's very difficult to forecast in the longer term. But this latest GFS spins this uh, low pressure system up, this X hurricane. If you do watch it, you can see the jet stream is pretty active with west to northwesterly winds. We're seeing bouts of rain and wind, but nothing too significant. However, as we head towards day 10, you can start to see the jet stream is starting to strengthen. And you can see this l main low pressure system combines with this hur uh, this X hurricane. You can see it really spinning up um, into a massive low. And that would be a significant system and, and undoubtedly would either be um, um, a named storm. So X whatever hurricane or tropical storm it is or if it, uh, if it loses its name. I don't know exact criteria for renaming storms, but it would be a named storm. This definitely if we did today, you see this scenario, you can see to the course of center of storm around 965 millibars. So this is a proper sort of autumnal uh, autumnal storm moving in here or wintry wintry storm. Now it is 300 hours away um, when this storm eventually reaches the UK. But you can see by day 10, it's well forecasted at the moment to be heading up into the middle of the Atlantic. And we'll see with the GEM, the ECMWF, they both have a similar scenario with the hurricane making its way to the central uh, central parts of the Atlantic. But it does move through, gives up very heavy rain, some strong winds. We do even see that we do see some quite warm upper air temperatures move through for a, a period of time. So we can see a lot of muggy conditions, uh, but some heavy rain, strong winds as this does sweep through. Now, the main centre of the low stays off to the north. So I suspect the most significant conditions will be in Scotland, potentially northern England with the strongest winds around the south, southern extent of this centre of the low. But widely, we've got tight ice to pass, so strong winds. And as we hit all the way to 284 hours, you see that low does clear, uh, clear away and we maintain into a very unsettled spell. So you can see very interesting conditions on this latest GFS with the potential of a significant X hurricane 
impacting the United Kingdom. And this is really something we need to keep an eye on, as this could really create some problematic conditions as we head into the first few weeks of September. But again, it is subject to change, and this is just one scenario at this stage. Um, so we do have a look the latest from the GM, see what that is showing up until data. And you can see we've got the big block at the moment, of course. That's going to be slowly breaking down towards this weekend. We see low pressure moving in by Sunday. All areas seeing some rain and more sort of probably we'll still see cloud, but may see some more sunnier spells as this block is broken apart. You can see high pressure tries to build back in, in fact, with the block over Scandinavia. But we repeatedly, especially in the north and west, bring westerly winds in with some rain. As we head towards day 10, you can see that hurricane moving up into the North Atlantic. And we'll have to keep an eye on how it does interact as it reaches the jet stream, which is just um, to its north, um, which is interacting with this low pressure system, maybe spinning this one up as well. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, and, and again, we'll have to see over the ne next few days what happens to that as we head into the 10-day time frame. Now, this storm hasn't developed, as I've said, um, to its to the extent that it is now. So it is still subject to quite a lot of uncertainty within its forecast. But it's looking like it could be dangerous um, over the next 10 to 14 days. So again, something we need to keep an eye on. If we do have a look at the ECMWF, see how that compares to GM, the GFS, you can see high pressure breaking down towards this weekend, low pressure moving in for all through Sunday. It is, a filling in, it is filling in this low pressure system, so weakening, but nevertheless, we'll have some rain um, and, a few, uh, and some gustier winds along with it. As we head all the way to day 10, you see another low pressure spin up. Now, this isn't the one affected by the X hurricane, which you can see just to the left of the picture here, just coming out of the North Atlantic. Similar track to the GFS GM, um, slightly different in exact track, but very similar location. So it does look like well forecast this is day 10, but you can see there's another low pressure spinning up. So we can even see some stormy conditions, um, even without um, this X hurricane fueling the, the jet the jet stream so we'll have to keep an eye on what happens with this but definitely just like the jet stream is going to be going active over the next couple of weeks something we haven't seen for a good few weeks now even back into sort of july time um, and before that where we've had a lot of high pressure around um but it has been pretty dull at times simply because we have had some trapped cloud if we do have a look at the upper air temperatures you can see there is a considerable amount of warm air around if we do run it back you can see at times when these low pressures approach because there's a lot of hot air to our south and in our, out in the atlantic as well this time of year we could get some warmer periods at times with the potential of seeing some temperatures get up into the low 20s but it will always be accompanied by the potential threat of showers drizzle rain so we have to keep an eye on that but as we head towards day 10 you can see some fresh conditions look likely to coming off coming in off the atlantic um so yeah temperatures look pretty variable over the next few weeks could be some warmer days can be some cooler days but it does look generally unsettled from the end of this weekend and beyond no sign of this block um, maintaining its strength over the uk so if we do now have a look at the icelandic met office at uh, the ECMWF ensembles. You can see at the moment we've got the big block over the UK all going for that. As we head towards, let's go to the 5th of September, you can see a bit of a mixed bag, really. You can see all oh, have that block heading to our north and our east, low pressure sliding in from the northwest across the UK, all with a very similar scenario, just slightly different placed areas of low pressure. Um, it could change slightly the direction of the wind so different air masses we're going to be seeing but at this stage all look like a very similar scenario with low pressure bringing wind rain and cloud to many areas if we do head through to the 10th of september you can see that block in some of the ensembles is trying to take back control you've seen the majority with the control and operational low pressures back in control but it could be bring up some warmer air from the south or southwest as we see high pressure to our east we've got another 14 with a block to our east potentially bringing in easterly winds but battling against that low pressure which wants to move in off the atlantic we've got another eight where we sort of in between where the system's no real signal we're gonna have another eight where the jet streams push back northwards similar to what we've seen recently but that is pretty in the minority um, and that would be turning dry and potentially a little bit warmer and then we've got seven with a block to our northeast and low pressure out in the atlantic again fighting up against that if we do move to the 14th or right to the end of the model you can see 
we are building vigorous areas of low pressure on pretty much all of the ensembles. Now, we'll have to keep an eye on what happens exactly with that X hurricane. But I do suspect looking at these, um, these ensemble charts, it does look like the majority are spinning up low pressures by that time, whether it does involve that X hurricane or whether it's just generally the jet stream um, becoming more active. Most of the ensembles, or if not all, are going for this scenario with low pressure plonked right off the, over the top of the UK um, with some pretty severe conditions. You could perhaps um, infer that this small feature here within the jet stream is the remnants of that X hurricane, but I don't want to say that for certain, as there is a lot of uncertainty with that. Um, but that could be um, what we're seeing there, and that may mix into um, these forecasts. And we'll, yeah, we'll just have to see what happens. But at this stage, it does look like that X hurricane is heading into the North Atlantic, and how it affects the jet stream and how it interacts is really going to depend on whether we do see um, potentially really quite some stormy conditions coming up. If we do have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see over the next few days, temperatures are well above average 850 HPA. But as I said, we've got an inversion. So temperatures, the surface, are going to be around average or below average, feeling pretty cool, uh, a bit miserable out there. We have cloud. You can see as we head towards the weekend, around 5th, 6th of September, we've got temperatures starting to cool down as air's coming off the Atlantic very slowly. Um, but we are going to see a big increase in precipitation with some big precipitation spikes coming and in the long term, all the way to the middle of September, it does look like a lot of precipitation is going to be around um, as low pressure is coming back in. A very mixed signal with the uh, temperatures, as you can see, for coming in, if we have a northwesterly airflow, there's still quite cool air it's starting to form over Greenland now, which could bring some cooler conditions. But also, also whenever we have sort of that X hurricane potentially mixing in, it could bring up some very warm air for a period of time. So we could be having a lot of fluctuating temperatures at 850 HPA. So that's why we've got a lot of uncertainty um, at 850 HPA. And we're just going to have to keep an eye on it. If we do have a look at the mean sea level pressure, which gives us a good indication you can see low pressure coming in over the 5th, 6th of September. Then we do get a bit of a rise in pressure as we're in between weather systems for a few days around 8th, 9th of December, uh, September. sorry. But it's not massively high pressure. Um, it's just generally higher than we had before, not as high as we have now. Um, so there still will be showers around. And then as we head towards 13th, 14th of September, you do see a big drop in, t in pressure charts uh, in the pressure on, on the ensembles, symbolizing low pressure. Uh, or the center of a low pressure system returning once again and that is where we are seeing that x hurricane come in be interesting to see what is shown in glasgow as that is to, that was on the gfs very close to the center of that vigorous low pressure system we saw and you can see that where reflected we've got some very very vigorous low pressure systems including the operational run and that will be fueled by that x hurricane in the longer term we'll have to keep an eye on this as if we get down to sort of 970, 980 millibars, um, which was that centre of the low, which was to the north of Scotland in the latest GFS, so we're not getting the, the deepest air of low pressure. But we'll, if it does get to that level, we will still see the associated winds with that as they're normally towards its sort of southern flank. Um, over Scotland, even parts of northern England, you could see some very, very strong gusts of wind and some he very heavy rain if we do see that scenario come off we saw in the operational run. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But at this stage... It doesn't look particularly encouraging if you are wanting any warmer or drier weather. It does look like the dry weather we've had recently hasn't really lived up to what I'd hoped. Um, we've seen a lot more cloud form under it than uh, than was initially expected really uh, a week or two ago when we start sort of seeing this crop up. Um, and yeah, just a bit disappointing really. But it's so difficult to forecast sort of inversions happening on, on sort of the mid uh, range forecast so yeah that's why it's been a bit grim really uh, recently we just yeah have had that cloud trapped so if we do lastly have a look at the uh, the latest from the uk met office run now this will get towards the weekend so we'll actually start to see the breakdown in the high pressure but you can see at the moment we've got a few drizzly showers heading from the east as i said pretty miserable at times but for the west and southwest potentially still pretty pleasant with a lot of sunshine around um when we do see the cloud break showers can continue coming in on that easterly breeze uh, throughout Wednesday. Not an absolute deluge, and I don't suspect it'll be particularly disruptive at all, but it might just mean it's a little bit miserable outside at times. 
That will be, uh, continue throughout the end of the week. It does die down a little bit towards Thursday, Friday before continuing again through Friday, Saturday. And as we head into Sunday morning, you can start to see heavy rain spreading in from the southwest, something we haven't seen for a good week or two now. Um, with stronger winds, heavy rain, thick cloud returning. Um, we have pretty uh, decent cloud cover at the moment, but it's not the thick cloud um, that we get with this sort of low-pressure systems. Um, and temperatures will be down again um, as we see low pressure coming back in with heavy rain. Um, and I know some areas have been very dry recently, so uh, heavy rain will actually be uh, useful for some areas, especially in Scotland, which is actually pretty dry at the moment, um, even though we have miserable conditions for many areas. So, yeah, heavy rain returning. Uh, I know some people will like that, some will not like it. If we do have a look at the temperatures, you can see this afternoon we've got 18, 19 degrees in a few spots, maybe a bit high across the south coast or southwest or even parts of Ireland, where we do see the cloud cover dissipate a little bit. As we head to Wednesday afternoon, you can see temperatures again, 18, 19, maybe the odd 20, 21 degrees in Scotland or Ireland, Northern Ireland, as we have less cloud there. But many areas we've got a thicker cloud, 15, 16, 17 degrees struggling and probably feeling a little bit chillier where we do have some drizzle around. If we do have a look at Thursday afternoon, you can see again, 20 degrees potentially in the west and across the south coast, maybe 22 degrees, 23 possible, where we do escape the cloud and the drizzly rain. And for Friday afternoon, once again, it's very similar, 21, 22 degrees potentially across the south coast, 17, 18 degrees for many areas across central England, western parts, and then across that east coast in the northeast and across Scotland, struggling around 12, 13 degrees, unfortunately, as it doesn't look particularly great. And as we lastly end up on Saturday, you can see temperatures are around 20, 21 degrees to maybe 22 degrees as it does look like things will brighten up a bit with less drizzle around. So, yeah, really interesting weather um, coming up in the next few weeks with these low pressure systems. But for the next four or five days, it is definitely going to be looking like it's going to be reasonably dry for many areas, especially in the west. A few drizzle patches in the east, but pretty cloudy, uh, pretty miserable, but generally dry so you can get out and do stuff if you um if you don't mind the cloudy and uh, potentially a few drizzle showers here and there so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon